Hey guys, if you're enjoying the podcast, could you please go and leave us a five-star review? Our mission with this podcast is to provide education and lessons from business leaders and founders for absolutely no cost. And every review we get and every bit of support that you throw behind us allows us to secure bigger names, bigger guests, and have amazing conversations. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. Thank you very much. Always remember, it's in the challenges that's when you're going to grow. Because I've had a lot of setback and I've had change and I've had really challenging times. And I think people really, they fear that. They fear setbacks, they fear changes, they fear challenges, they fear failure. But always remind yourself that when you're in the trench, that's where the grit lies. That's what I'd say to my younger self. Chelsea, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much, Kyle, for having me today. I'm so thrilled to be here with you. Uh, we were talking off air, but I kind of said it's it's like conversations and, and especially as a podcaster, which you are yourself, a lot of the wisdom that you get to absorb from other people, you, you know, they for me, it very much comes at particular times or maybe when I need this lesson or there's some type of, you know, problem that I need to solve. Um, and I thoroughly enjoy researching you know my guests and and looking into their story and i gotta say yours is quite profound um you know in terms of your journey um your profession now um and more importantly i think the period of time that we are in um post pandemic you know i i I know we were talking off air again but it's just mania at the moment you know running businesses being in workplaces so I think there's probably going to be a lot of founders and business leaders listening to this and, it, you know, I think it'll be really helpful. But, I mean, I think we can start with your journey. I'd love to hear your story and, and you know, uh, especially how you tell it. I think, you know, um, it is it is really relatable for a lot of people and, and also it'll be quite inspirational as well, which I think is really important. But I'd love to hear the story of your story and then also how we ended up with, you know, starting EQ Minds, which is, you know, now your business and your profession. Thanks, Kyle, firstly, for that really generous and kind feedback. I really appreciate that. So for those of you that I haven't met before who are listening in, my story sounds probably like a very familiar one to people in the corporate world. So it was a very, very long days. You know, 12 hour days was kind of my vibe back then. Hendrix Gin, I don't know, are you a gin drinker? <laughs> I love gin. <laughs> so I probably need this, so just we'll treat it like that, okay? <laughs> so me too, right? I used to take the edge off my stress with, with a glass of gin at night time. In the morning, it'd be, you know, triathlon training, a lot of coffee, and another 12-hour day. That very much rise and grind. And then 2015, we fall pregnant with Clara and Jay and I, my husband and I were so elated because it took us six years to actually fall pregnant with her. And then something very ironic happened, particularly for a career drivenist and an optimistic person like myself. And that is nine weeks post birth, I actually end up in this psychiatric hospital fighting for my life. And I had something called postnatal depression I was suffering really severe suicidal ideation and the safest place I could be was in this hospital bed. Now in life, you know, when you're faced with an adversity like that, I always feel like you get to this crossroad. And I had two choices really while I was laying there. One, do I return back to that lifestyle, pre-mental illness, that fast pace of work hard, socialize hard, work out hard? Or two, do I learn and I grow from this gift that the universe has just given to me? So at the end of the five week stay, my amazing psychiatrist, she said to me, you know what, Chels, you have this weird fascination with your brain. You're a really kind person. And you've walked through the shoes of a very clinically unwell patient. I think you'd be a beautiful psychologist. So I thought, (laughs) radio. So I left that hospital. I moved to a small town on the south coast from Sydney and I went back to university to study psychology because I never ever wanted anyone, Kyle, here in Australia or across the globe to ever end up where I had. And I became a mindfulness and meditation coach. I still drink coffee in the morning. I still have a glass of Shiraz on a Friday night. I think life is really about integration and balance. However, after going through that, We then founded EQ Minds, our company, 
in 2016. And the mission of that company will never change and it's to empower and educate people to take care of their mental health and their well-being every single day. And to date, it, we're so proud and it gives me so much joy because we've trained about a million people across the globe since 2016. Wow. That's amazing. I think uh, I find it really interesting how our stories, once we can learn to kind of understand them, can be the most empowering thing in the world. And I think, you know, I think a lot of that journey that you go on can be just, okay, what is my story? How can I understand it? And then more importantly, how can I use this to just live the life that I want to live? Um, I, I guess a question, for the, an initial question for me is kind of going back to um, that period in your life. And I guess even just on a personal level f to learn for myself is like, does the hardship or the say the mental health issues that people have, do, is it formed around identity? You know, like what, what do you, for, you know, in your professional opinion, what are, what do you think the core kind of root to the, the, the experiences that people have when it is say a mental health problem or anxiety or um, potentially it's even just rooted in the daily habits that you have and so on. Like what, what uh, cause I think it's something that everybody experiences, you know, like I know I have, I, you know, like, and I'd probably still do to this day and, and still try to, to work with myself on it. Um, but I'd love to just get a gauge of, you know, potentially your experiences um, and more importantly, your experiences now working with people and what some of the, I guess, the root causes are of, say, the, the hardship that people do face when it comes to their mental health. It's a really great question. And personally, my opinion would be, you know, even from my own experience, mental illnesses usually stem from a few things. One, it's a genetic vulnerability say grandma or dad or you know your auntie or uncle has anxiety or depression or one of the other mental illness disorders like bipolar or anything that sits in that in that sort of remit so one it's a genetic vulnerability two it's maybe some kind of trauma mm. you know where you go through this huge trauma in your life or three you burn out and it switches that gene expression on and there's three reasons why I see founders, CEOs, leaders, parents, university students, doctors, athletes. The reasons why I see them burn out is usually for these three reasons. One, it's a lack of focus on themselves. So really lack of focus on their mental health and their physical health. Two, it's a lack of boundaries. And three, it's their ability to constantly stay in what I call beast mode, <laughs> where they try and tick off absolutely everything on their to-do list at the detriment, right, of their sleep, of their mental health. And, and if they've got a vulnerability there in their genetic lining, then that's when that can switch on to anxiety or they can switch into mania or they could go into, you know, depression. So I think those things you know, is like a little bit of a storm that brews away. And I think these conversations are so crucial Kyle mm. to be honest right because what we're doing here is we're debunking the myth around the stigma for mental illness and it doesn't look a particular way and that if you do notice any signs and symptoms popping up for you the bravest thing you can do is to reach out and ask for help you don't need to be functioning in life every day feeling like that yeah it's such a dynamic situation isn't it like I can think back to time like there was a time in my life where I suffered anxiety you know um and I remember at the time you just kind of I know me personally I just had no idea why I felt that way and more importantly that you almost end up building anxiety on top of anxiety which is like it's really scary you know like it was a really scary time and and I was very lucky um that I had someone there that I could communicate with but I think uh, it is such a dynamic situation, you know, um, and even now, like personally, like life, you know, all it takes is one little shake up in your life and, and things can kind of change on a dime. So mm. I know for me, um, you know, things like mindfulness, meditation, um, we're just massive, you know, in, in uh, I guess the process of, I don't know what the right language is around it, but for me, the, right, the way I thought of it was, you know, it's not, 
getting rid of anything. It's just learning how to manage it. Um, I loved for you to dive into some of the strategies and, and, and things that you um, teach, but also um, things that you use yourself personally to, to help manage, you know, um, mental health and, and um, keep it healthy. Uh, yeah, thank you. That's, that's a really good question around, I guess, for me, the boundaries. You know, I think in life, the, there's the pillars that we have to nail, you know, 80% of the time, we have to get our sleep right. Like that sleep is like the elixir of our, of our life mm. really. And so the way we feel every single day starts the night before. And so it's really, really crucial that you honor that. And it could be as easy as just jumping off your screens half an hour before bed, you know, so you get the deep REM sleep. It could be cutting the coffee after 2 p.m. in the afternoon because of the half-life of caffeine. Yeah. It could be about knowing about the two-drink rule with alcohol so you don't step over that so you get enough deep REM. So it's these little things that you work out with your body and what the research supports of how do we optimise, number one, is the sleep. And then number two, it's like the, the gut health and the mental health and the nutrition side of it. So we need to get that kind of humming along really nicely. A really cool hack when it comes to gut health is Dr. Rob, Rob Knight. He's like the guru across the globe when it comes to gut health and mental health. And all he says, if, if people listening just do this one thing, it's about the diversity of plants in your diet is what gives us a really thriving microbiome. And all he says is that we need 30 plants a week. Now, some people will say to me, Kyle, in, a, in the sessions, wow, 30 plants, that's so many. And I'm like, yeah, it does sound like a lot. So I went and did some plant research and there's like 400,000 plants across the globe and we can actually eat 300,000 of them. So a really awesome little tip that I've learned is the Bragg's Organic Sprinkles. I don't know if you've ever seen it in your supermarket. No. I just recommend everyone to go buy that. It's five bucks. I'm not sponsored by Bragg's, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's got 24 plants in it. You know, you just sprinkle it on your eggs and on your roasted potatoes and in your bolognese. Uh, so that number three that I really do is, is movement every single day. Like today I sacrificed washing my hair because I wanted to hit, you know, hit the pavement, go for a really brisk walk and then lift weights in the gym. And so movement for me is a huge component of making sure that I'm safeguarding my mental health. Then there's some kind of stress management technique in there. That's the fourth pillar. Whether for me, like, so for me, it's meditation. Like I cannot deny the research anymore when it comes to meditation and what it does to our amygdala in the brain and how it reduces the size of that, which kind of should blow our mind, right? Because if our amygdala is getting smaller, we become less reactive, less stressed, less, less anxious. So they're the four pillars that I definitely uh, am very disciplined about. The, the big one that I think has just been incredible in our life is that because we, we do work hard, like I think we're talking about this offline, is that as founders, no one sees the hard work that you actually put in. Mm -hmm. It is the hardest slog that you will ever have, but you love it, right? Yeah. This unwavering obsession. So it actually doesn't feel like work, even though you're working harder than pretty much a lot of other uh, you know, well, how I used to work, I suppose, in corporate. So in saying that, because we do about 10 keynotes a week, that's a lot. I speak a lot. I see a lot of people every week. Every six weeks, we take some time off the grid. Now, having our own company at EQ Minds, I can make those rules, right? Because being the owner, I can take a week off. Now, people like that is just so detrimental to your financial income. And I'm like, but that's looking at it the wrong way. This is for longevity. This is for fulfillment in my job. This is so when I get back from that, you know, week or it could be just four days, when I turn up on stage, the client gets the most engaged, joyful version of me. Now, for people who are listening who are in the corporate world, for you, and this is what I recommend to our leaders, is that it could be just every six weeks on that weekend, you take the weekend off the grid. So what I mean by that is like take us off. You know, you might just go camping or you might go somewhere to just escape the world. And I really encourage you just to try just for one night and two days switching off from the world. And the most remarkable thing will happen to you. And that is that when you switch off from the outside, you actually switch back on, on the inside. And the people that are there with you, if you're away with your family or with good friends, they get the most mindful version of you. And I can promise you that one night, those two days off the grid, it's gonna feel like two weeks and it's incredibly liberating on every level. Yeah, one of the most profound experiences of my life was a seven day silent retreat. 
Whoa. By myself. Wow. Yeah, like it was it was the most profound experience of my life, the most emotional. Like day one was very much like, what am I doing kind of thing? This is a bit weird. And then day four was just like sobbing all day. Mm. Like, because you, mm. you're right, like you, you don't realize what you're neglecting until you just spend some time with yourself. And it's the same with family and stuff as well. So, yeah, I can definitely attest to that. Like it is, and I, to be honest, like I think the the, the most important thing with this is like, it is a struggle, like, you know, for every founder or business person or if you're really passionate about something, to take time off um, is, is really hard. It's, it's like, you know, to, to step away. But I think what you, what you mentioned, would you call that like narrowed focus in a sense? Like, you know, that week off, if you can financially account for it, you know, and, and you kind of work it into your, back, your, your profit and loss and you, you're accounting for that, um, the, that time off you know, it allows you to narrow your focus, say, for that next period of time and, and, and you almost become a better version of yourself or you can have a, I guess, a, what's the word? Like, I guess, more quality, you know, over that period of time. A thousand percent. And also, if you're starting up a business for legacy and you want to be here long term, mm. then it's vital that you have these consistent breaks. You know, so often what I see is that people will save up. They'll save up for their long-term holiday over four weeks over the Christmas period. But they're gassing hard, right, all year. And then mm. finally they get to their holiday and they get sick. And it's because we've forgotten to take care of ourselves along the way. Or what they do is they work hard to financially get ahead and get security. And then to get the money at 65, 70 when they retire and get their super, but all of a sudden they're not body abled to climb, you know, the beautiful mountains or to go skiing in remarkable places across the world because they've forgotten to take care of their vessel. And so life, as you get older, and I'm definitely noticing this in my 40s, is that time will fall off a cliff. Mm. It gets faster and faster, and I'm always working out ways to slow down time. And one of those ways that I do that is by taking those scheduled breaks. And I'm enjoying the journey because life is temporal. Who knows if you make it to 65? I don't know that. So I want to enjoy it while I'm here. It's a great point. And I think it's sometimes the easiest thing to lose sight of. You know, I, I, as a founder, I can I, you know, definitely attest to that too. I'm actually really interested in this subject because I think, um, I mean, as a business person, we look at, say, company culture as... Um, something that's really, really important. And everybody wants to build a great company culture. And what that looks like is a little bit different to everybody. Um, but I would love to get a gauge of, say, uh, I don't know if this is something that you, you teach, but um, how do you structure that? So if I'm looking at, say, a quarter or we're looking at a 12-month plan, um, although it will be a little bit different for everybody, um, how are we structuring these kind of, I guess, habits and, and events uh, into our company to create a company culture that people love coming to? They're at their best more often than not. Uh, they have a safe environment um, and, and, you know, they're connecting with each other. I think one of the biggest things that I see big brand companies do exceptionally well, and it, it depends, right, on, on whether it's a small business that's listening in or a huge corporate giant or and your budget. Because I think what happens, what I see that, that goes really well is, you know, you get external experts that come in that help their people. One, what that shows is that we truly care. We're mm -hmm. investing into you, but it's not like a one and done kind of thing, you know, where someone comes in on their horse, delivers this inspiring talk, then they take off. Then three days later, the whole workforce habituates <laughs> back yeah, yeah. into their regular yeah, routines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really feel like, you know, they, those consistent, whether it's the mindful journey at EQ Minds they go on, whether it's another facilitator or another provider, I think that's important. I think number two that's really, really important is that well-being starts from the top. The troops of the company are always looking at the leadership team and seeing what they're doing. So the leadership team and executive teams, they need to be very, very invested into their own well-being. If they're saying we really care about you and we want you to make sure that you're getting your sleep and you're moving well and you're eating well and all those good things that we know for performance and productivity is crucial, yet they're peppering you with emails from 1am, <laughs> there's some dissonance there. 
right? So they're, they're, that's almost saying to us, hey, for us to get into that CEO position or that executive general manager role, I need to be up at 1 a.m. when the opposite is true. They need to actually get really good sleep because then their memory consolidates down and they turn up the next day as really high performers. So I think that's another thing. Number three is having support around you. Some kind of very, you know, EAP, employee assisti- assistance program, where employees feel safe to go to if things are starting to spiral for them. So having that as an offering within the company of saying, hey, we do care. You know, we've aligned here with this EAP service. Mm. If you're not, if you're, if you are displaying one of these signs or symptoms, we really encourage you to reach out and get yourself some help. The other things that I see work well are things like bike racks, are things like healthy food in the, you know, in the lunch rooms. It's things like instead of buying everyone a bowl of Bollinger champagne for Christmas, as much as I do love Bollinger, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like, okay, how about we get everyone an aura ring to track their sleep, right? So yeah. all of a sudden we were giving them gifts that are actually promoting their wellness rather than harming their brain. So I really, I mean, there's some really outstanding things that I see culturally happen. And it's always, you know, if people who are listening going, well, you know, when's enough enough of what we're doing with investing in well-being with our employees? It's never enough <laughs> because you're going to have to constantly keep trying different things for your people because your people are your number one priority. If they're turning up to work as a physical shell and they're mentally not there, guess what? you're not getting the best out of them. Mm -hmm. Plus then they've got that brain when they go home. So their home life, they're not fulfilled there. And the incredible leaders that we work with every day, they really genuinely care. And, And you'll see that trickle through the culture. Guys, I've owned businesses now for 10 years and let me tell you, it is hard enough as it is. Business insurance is just one of those things you don't want to have to worry about. I've been with BizCover now for six years uh, and they make it seamless, no hassle, uh, no paperwork, and you can get insured instantly. Do yourself a favor, go see if you can save some money and get a better deal. Hey team, if you're enjoying this episode, please remember to follow or subscribe on whatever platform you're tuning in on. We do not want you to miss out on any of the education we're putting out. Now, back to the episode, I hope you enjoy. What I, so, because obviously there's, we, I feel like we're, we're, there's almost like a shift, you know, and maybe we're in the middle of that where, you know, I don't know, I don't know the time period, but maybe we would say 2000s, maybe 1995 through to maybe just after the GFC. And now, you know, probably about the 2016, we start to see this shift in, and maybe it's a generational shift as well. I, I don't know, but what people value, you know, and, and more importantly, how to get the best out of your team. And I think you're definitely right. You know, it's something that I've noticed is that people want to feel cared for and it can't just be words on a wall. It can't just be words, like you said at a keynote, but what sounds like what you're saying is what great leaders are really good at is following through. And so we actually had Al Roseby um, on the podcast. And one of the things that I really profoundly remember was, and it's not necessarily directly related to this, but it was more that she put her leaders in her team through a 12 month leadership program. Um, and it kind of resonates with what you're saying. And, and you could almost say something similar around, say, if we're trying to look after our staff's mental health, it can't just be something that is a once off, or maybe we do this one chat once a quarter or something like that, but it mm. probably needs to be looked at as more of like a program. Is that correct? Yeah, because it's the consistency of laying those foundations and it's building up those habits on a consistent level. And I really feel like that's what we need as human beings to actually form up new habits. It takes like 66 days. I know a lot of noise out there is 21 days and that's true for short-term memory, but 66 days for long-term memory, Mm. so that's a long time. So you want refreshing content and you want new things that they can work on to constantly arm out their toolkit because to be honest, meditation isn't gonna be for everyone. It could be the fact that they actually find flow sports is better for them for their stress management. People might know, not know what gut health is, right? You could have a whole session on sleep or mindset. So I think it's really important you've got this backpack and then people can choose what they pull out of it because life, it's up and down. And it, it's an inevitable part of our journey is to sometimes have challenging times. So we constantly need exposure 
how do we harness that? How do we harness more grit? How do we make this journey a little bit more smooth? And I think those long-term programs are excellent. I also think something that, that we do at EQ Minds is once a year we do a strategy offsite, right, with our speakers. We're scaling our speaker profiles across Australia and New Zealand. So we catch up for a few days in the offsite. And then two, so we're always sort of getting together. And then, then we have another offsite later in that year for fun. And so if they hit particular, you know, sales targets, they get to choose the destination. And so regardless, if we don't hit it, we take everyone up to Noosa, right? The, up we go and we have massages and dinners and we celebrate. And if they hit it, they chose Bali this year. So we're off to Bali and I'm sure we're going to hit that target. Um, but I mean, I've empowered them to choose the destination of where they'd like to go. And then we celebrate together as a team because you want to have fun in this life as well. And you want to reward them for, for the hard work that they put in. What, what is the relate? Because that's what I, that's I think what people and founders struggle with. And I think it's one of the hardest things to really um, nail as a founder and as a leader is the balance between performance and say, I don't know if the right word is reward, but performance and, and leisure or fun and, 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 you know, the things that are going to bring you together and connection and so on. But obviously and what i was trying to get at before was there's the the stigma around work hard 80 hour weeks and although i'm a massive advocate of working hard i think the hesitation from a lot of people is can you do both um and i'd love for you to uh, maybe even talk to them or give them a piece of advice if maybe that's their mindset like what are you saying to founders that are stuck in their way or leaders that are stuck in their way with no we have to get you know it's just work 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 <laughs> uh so again the fastest way to burn out is that and you know work hard and 80 hours a week every week and rise and grind and no rest days that mindset is so antiquated and it has to go if you want to have people that stay within your business, because I can tell you right now, there's a lot of cultures out there that are smashing it and treating their people really well. In saying that, we want our team to work hard, like in terms of the work ethic. When they're working, they are disciplined, they are so focused, so they're actually producing more. It's that whole thing like work smarter, not harder. I encourage all my team every six weeks to take a break, right? Because of that whole thing, when they get back, I know they're gonna hit the ground running and they're gonna be very, very successful. The last thing I want for them is to burn out or get into exhaustion or they sub out of EQ Minds and go somewhere else because they're feeling tired, exhausted, not cared for, not having fun anymore. Uh, so I think it's that whole thing again around, as a, as a founder or within your business, what does success look like for you? Mm -hmm. What does so it look true. like? If you're there going, you know what, I want to be a startup, flog everyone, flog myself and sell this in three years, you know, if that's your value, then that's, you know what that is, right? So for us, our success does not look like that. It just doesn't because we're here for the long term. EQ Minds will be around for a long, long time and we have to establish that cultural piece right from the get-go. Yeah, that's super powerful. I think humans are... And, and you learn, I reckon you learn this lesson over and over again, but we're actually wired that way, where if we give ourselves six hours to do something, we will get it done in six hours. <laughs> if we give ourselves 12, we'll get it done in 12. And yeah. I have to constantly remind myself of that is like, um, you know, I think the, uh, like the 12 hour days, what's most important is not the hours you work, it's actually what you get done mm. uh, and prioritizing that. And I think that's the beauty of what you're saying is that, I think previously it's probably been more um, you can't have both. And I think now we're probably – and I think maybe that's the cultural shift as mm -hmm. well that we're seeing is you can. And, mm -hmm. and it's actually probably a little bit more beneficial to have both where you can be mentally healthy, you can have fun, you can have time off, and you can still really achieve amazing things. Mm. What are some of the benefits you see um, for individuals in companies but also for teams in companies when – they start to take on this mindset uh, and more importantly like what are the results you know like and um, even from a, a functional standpoint like do you see that 
teams actually love spending a lot more time together, you know, and because I know sometimes the dysfunction of a team can be, wow, I just don't, I just really don't want to be there today or I don't really want to be around these people and, and therefore we're not connecting and therefore we're not, you know, innovating and we're not getting the ideas and the flow. What are some of the results that you see, you know, both for individuals in teams and then the teams themselves, you know, when they take on that mindset? It's a great question. And PwC released this research around for every dollar you invest in well-being within your company, you get $2.30 back from a revenue stream. Because what you will see is once people start looking after their mental health and physical health and their social health and all those other things that make up us as a healthy human being is that they're more productive. So you actually get more juice out of their brain if you take care of them. It's this, you know, it's almost like people view it as a juxtaposition. Like when you, you know, when you go skiing and they say you've got to go down that black run, but you've got to face your skis down the mountain. The, the last thing you want to do is face the skis down the mountain, you know. The last thing that people think about in terms of when it comes to hard work, back when I was in corporate, it was this machismo attitude where the CEO would rock up at, you know, I don't know, 2 a.m. on an international flight and turn up at the office at 6 a.m. <laughs> it's like this, you know, bravo, machismo <laughs> attitude, Super, that. Yeah. And we used to honour that. And I think, gosh, that's wild because four hours of sleep, he's not functioning well, you know, like that's just so detrimental. And so what we will see definitely when people invest into these kinds of programs or within their people and the people take accountability, because that's another huge component of it, isn't it? Mm. Like one, we can, you know, give them the tools, but that person has to be intrinsically motivated to own their stuff. You know, they need to take accountability. And when they do do that, right, it's working out their intrinsic motivators. And when they do take that on, then what happens is they become happier. They become more fulfilled. They become more productive. Their memory is sharper. They are less stressed. Plus, they're just bloody legends to be around, right? So when you turn up to work, we spend a lot of time at work, a lot of time. You want to be around people that you really like. And if you haven't watched the uh, or listened to the Dr. Nicholas Christakis TED Talk on the hidden influence of social networks, I cannot encourage people right now to pause this podcast and write that down because that will show you how crucial, and this is his research over 30 years, around how emotional contagions are very real. So if we turn up into the office and we're in a really low mood and we're cranky and we're irritable, it's like, I know this isn't very COVID appropriate, Kyle, but it's like we are psychologically sneezing onto each other's brain all day and we transfer that mood across by 45%. So I, that research alone gets me super accountable. Of how am I turning up today? How am I turning up today for Kyle? How am I turning up today for later on at the keynote event for the people that are going to give up an hour of their valuable time to listen to me to speak? Mm. That helps me own my stuff. And it's okay to have bad days sometimes. I still have hard days or bad days, but if I do have a bad day, I clear the decks. I clear the decks. I had one the other week. I just cleared my schedule the Friday. I woke up, had three podcast interviews on. I had no keynote speaking that day. And I called my husband going, I'm not feeling myself. I need to clear the decks today. And I'm going to take a mental health day and a joy day. So he's like, totally, darling, you do that. And I literally took myself out for breakfast. I went for an ocean swim, had a massage. I just loved myself that day and just really recharged. And then by the Monday when I had big events on, I was back on top. That's amazing. And I think, I mean, I think that in itself is just really important. Like it's, I mean, it takes a lot of self-awareness, but um, knowing that it's going to be okay if you do those things, like I think that's the hardest part about making that decision. But I think once you can understand the benefits and it probably comes from just doing it, you know, like I know it's definitely something that, um, for me, it's like a little golf game, you know, like a little sunset golf game can really just go boom, like it can change <laughs> things. Whereas previously it was meditation, like meditation was big for me earlier on. And I think you mentioned this before, it's like the tools in the, in, in the backpack type mm. thing. Like for me, it's golf now, just mm. as a little hobby, um, play that at sunset. And if I'm feeling stressed, cause I, I, I don't look at my phone, that's a big part of it, but it's also like. I'm just not thinking about work or I'm not thinking about the problems that I have. And I think that's just, for me, half the battle a lot of the time is Mm -hmm. not stressing myself out from thinking of all the things I've got to get done or all the problems that I've had. But um, I I really love that. I would love 
to now shift gears a little bit and talk about yourself as a founder. Um, and, and, and I guess, um, cause I think the interesting thing is you work with founders and you obviously coach a lot of founders and you do a lot of keynotes and you work with a lot of founders and business leaders, but obviously you are one yourself and you have to implement all this stuff yourself and, and make sure that you're aware of it and, and so on. But I'd love to get a gauge of what your journey's been like as a founder and more importantly, how have you managed the struggles of say needing to grow and, you know, really, you know, pushing the envelope, but also, you know, looking after yourself, um, especially after the experiences that you have been through um, and what that journey has been like for you and, and how you continue yourself to, you know, keep striving for more and keep trying to, to grow and, 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 you know, build the brand and, and head towards the vision. Um, while still obviously, you know, um, caring for yourself and, and, and get the life that you, you have and, and your own mental health as well? It's a big question. I'll try and unpack it as best as I can. So with the with founding EQ Minds, to be honest, and, and I'm sure founders will absolutely understand this, is this unwavering obsession, isn't it, about your vision? Mm. And I remember when I set up EQ Minds in 2016, my husband, who is a skeptic banker, <laughs> he said to me, darling, what are the chances that this business will fail? And I said to him, 0%. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And he said, what do you mean 0%? Like no one ever says that. And I'm like, this thing will not fail. I said, I never want anyone to ever end up in a hospital bed. There's this internal flame inside me. I think about it all the time you know, in the shower. And I do things like you, you know, I need flow things like horse riding or surfing of things when I'm actually got dedicated time and I'm not thinking about the business because I have an unwavering focus and obsession around mental health across the globe. And so knowing that, right, when I started the company and all founders will understand this, it is you doing everything at the start mm -hmm. because you have no money. You are doing absolutely everything. You're the marketing person, you are HR, you are the accountant, you're scheduling your social media, you're booking your flights, you are doing your invoicing, you're turning up and delivering content, you are creating content, you're refining, you're tweaking, you're studying at university. That is a lot of stuff going on and no one sees that. No one sees that in those first few years. I caught a train to Sydney every other day to have a coffee with clients, right? To start talking to them. And, but the biggest thing was that I had this obsession that I'm like, this thing is going to go, like it is going to go. I'm hitting a wave as well. Like, you know, that was a part of the journey was that the timing, you know, was lucky. 2016 mindfulness wasn't even really a thing here in Australia. And I remember saying to my husband, imagine if the corporate world knew what I now knew with studying rather than coming in, I've never had an external speaker in corporate talk to me about well-being and how I can do these zero cost tools for my brain health. And so I thought there's something in this. And then, you know, the journey started. One of my first clients was eBay, just a small company. Yeah, just, <laughs> so, just a little one. Yeah. But before I got to eBay, I was doing free sessions with the Gerringong Rotary Club, training all the, you know, the 80 year olds in Gerringong to get my content revised. And then I was, you know, which I loved because I'd see Beryl down at the ocean pools and, oh, Chelsea, I'm practicing my gratitude. I'm like, oh, Beryl, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is lovely for our community because yeah, I got yeah, to know yeah. everyone down there. Then I'd do free sessions at the hospitals and, and then I got coaching. And so there's a lot of training that went into that. And then my girlfriend's like, you need to meet the people in culture and HR at eBay. So I went up there for a coffee and they said, look, we like the sound of this mindfulness thing can you come in for one session? And I was beyond pumped, right? So I'm like, okay. So I get home and my fee was really cheap back then, by the way. I'm now very expensive, <laughs> but back then it was cheap. Yeah. And uh, so I turn up to eBay and I do the one session, like, we love it. Let's do another eight sessions. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I'm That would have been the, the moment. The you were moment. like, okay. We're, this we're, is... This yeah. is big, right? Yeah. I'm still not really earning any money. So yeah. my husband's backing me and, you know... And anyway, so we go do eight sessions with eBay. One of the general managers moves there to Uber. They're like, we need you at Uber. Can you come across to Uber? And then someone saw me there, took me to Westpac, right? Then so this business just starts blowing up with these big brands. 
And then when that started and I started getting more income coming in, I could then hire my first virtual assistant from the Philippines. <laughs> now that for the first three years, I was still flogging myself hard, right? But I was still making sure I was doing every six weeks, taking the break, I was honoring my health, but I had capacity to hire a virtual assistant. And mm. I'm like, I'm killing it. I've got a virtual assistant now, I'm paying her $200 a week. That's actually a lot of money in the Philippines. So just as an FYI, if you're like, Chelsea, that's really cheap. That's actually their, their salary. Uh, and I was supporting her and her family. And she was great. She was a part of the company for the first three years. And then I empowered her so much to go set up her own virtual assistance business. So now she's dominating that world. And by that stage, three years in, I had enough income to tap my husband on the shoulder going, I need a really good GM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And being a skeptic banker and risk adverse, he's like, I don't know, darling. And I said, you know what, take a sabbatical. And I just kept pitching all these things to him. You could surf every day. You don't <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you don't love it, you know, Jay, if you don't love it within a couple of weeks, go back. Go back to the corporate world, but take a sabbatical and come try this with me. Anyway, so he, he came out two weeks later. He had such less stress. You know, he was managing, you know, 50 people in the bank. I was like, gosh, I'm loving this. I said, great, never go back. <laughs> And we worked with our psychologist, right, to define our roles because I think that's really important when you work with your partner. And we've got very established roles, my husband and I. And so he's been the general manager now for the last three and a half years. He said to me, you know what, darling, it's the only time I've been, you know, happy to sleep my way to the top. And I'm like, well, it's good to know people in high, price, <laughs> high places like myself. <laughs> so that was hilarious. Uh, so he's the general manager. Then we start hiring university grads. And then uh, in the, the last couple of years, we've got the most amazing digital marketing team ever. And they've taken our company to the next sphere. And then we had to work out ways to separate me from the brand because mm -hmm. to be able to scale. Such a hard thing to do, yeah. And, and to be honest, Kyle, there's a really big keynote risk personnel. I was a very high paid blue collar worker. And what I mean by that, if I don't turn up, our company does not get paid. So as founders, you always have to establish ways to bring in other income streams. And plus with the mission of empowering and educating people to take care of their mental health globally, I can't do that alone. So how do I start scaling that business? We tried with courses. We tried many different things, which you do as a founder, you try so many different things. And so what we are seeing that's working because the demand is there is scaling it with human capital, mm. which for the first few years I was scared about doing. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because of, of the load, right? The psychological stress of managing other people. But now we have five amazing speakers in the company. So there's 10 in the company. We're about to hire another four next year. And so, you know, our three year strategy is very robust in the company. And I'm very razor focused on that because you can get pulled into all these other shiny things going on we try and shove a square peg into a round hole. And I've got two exceptionally good business mentors that keep me very razor focused on the strategy. Yeah, what a, what a story. Um, I, I mean, I just want to congratulate you on that. It sounds like it's been such a journey and, and I know how hard it is, you know, so congratulations. Um, Thank you. And I can see the uh, twinkle in your eye when you talk about your team and, and so on. So like, it's, it's something that we have the ambitions of doing uh, as well. So yeah, just a massive congratulations on that. Thank um, you. And you're doing great work. I think that's the thing that uh, I admire the most as well is, is you, you know, you're making such a, a large impact. And um, I think mental health, you know, as I said, I experienced some, you know, mental health, uh, I would say, you know, I went through a period of anxiety earlier on in my life and um, it is really, really tough. And I think um, I'm really glad that the world is starting to pay more attention to it um, because uh, the world that we were in where it wasn't recognized um it's not a you know i think we're, we're going to be in a much better place so and and you know you're leading the charge for that so again i think um you know it's very admirable and and i just wanted to say a massive congratulations Thank i just you. wanted to finish we usually do quick fire but we're on the clock so i don't want to take up too much of your time so i just want to ask um quick fires like the we usually ask a kind of set of questions i'm only going to ask you one um, what's one piece of advice for your younger self? Always remember, it's in the challenges that's when you're going to grow. 
because I've had a lot of setback and I've had change and I've had really challenging times. And I think people really, they fear that. They fear setbacks, they fear changes, they fear challenges, they fear failure. But always remind yourself that when you're in the trench, that's where the grit lies. That's what I'd say to my younger self. I love it. Perfect. <laughs> um, I want to say a massive thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I know that your day is crazy, so um, <laughs> I really, really appreciate it. Where can everybody find you? So um, social handles, Instagram, LinkedIn, all the works and websites and stuff. Well, Kyle, I've, I've absolutely loved this chat and mutual kudos and respect to you, mate, with everything you're building here. Uh, so the best place to find us is either our website, eqminds.com, our handle at eqminds on Instagram and at Facebook. We do mental health tips and tools and resources up there every single day. And probably my new book, uh, my only book, I've only written one book. <laughs> <laughs> it's called The Mindful High Performer and it has like... 300 you know or more tips and tools for people's mental health plus my personal mental health story and it's speckled with my deadpan sarcastic sense of humor because <laughs> <laughs> mental health is such a serious topic and uh we've got to make it palatable for people out there so thank you for having me i've i've loved it no no honestly um again congratulations and highly recommend definitely go check out everything that was just mentioned donny thanks for for producing the episode and, and doing a great job um once again and to our listeners a massive thank you for your support um it's just been a crazy year. It's coming to an end and we couldn't do it without you. And because of you, we get to interview amazing people like Chelsea, um, which we love doing. So a massive thank you and hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll see you next week.